Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we are going to be returning to a what if scenario. It's been a while since we've done some and this one is what if Jupiter and the Sun swap positions but I'm going to put a twist on it. I'm going to have all of the moons enabled around Jupiter especially so when the Sun replaces Jupiter all of those moons will now be orbiting the Sun. So I think that could definitely cause an interesting uh Definitely cause some interesting uh, results. And one thing as well, depending on where Jupiter is in its orbit, it could have different effects on Saturn especially. So, for instance, if I was to put Jupiter here and then replace it with the Sun, Saturn's orbit would be a lot closer than what it would be if I replaced the Jupiter with the Sun at this position. So, for the highest amount of drama, I'm going to try the first scenario with Jupiter there. So, first of all, I need to put the regular Jupiter in so I can add the moons. So let's go ahead and just hop straight into it. So Jupiter, so that's the regular Jupiter. Press play so it enables it in the simulation. Right, now, it's that button. Uh, minimize. Nope. Uh, I always forget where the add moon button is. There it is. So add moons. Plop that on. Press play. So the moons are enabled around Jupiter for going orbit mode. They're all there. Perfect. So they go all doing their thing. So Saturn, same deal with you. I'm going to go ahead and add the moons. So let's plop the, Saturn, the regular Saturn in. Add the moons to Saturn. Same deal. So there you go. So they're the only ones. Uranus and Neptune, they're too far away. Their moons aren't really going to have much changes. Um, so I'm going to, and just for simulation speed purposes, I'm going to do the same thing as well. The inner planets, I'm going to leave their orbits alone for this scenario. So now we got to do the thing. So let's just slow down time just so we make sure we're running. Because I'm going to have to quickly flick it on and off just to get the orbits running. So nice and slow. A couple minutes. Okay, fine. So now the sun. I'm going to go ahead and replace this with Jupiter. Plot that in there. And then... Jupiter itself. Now we replace this with the sun. <laughs> so this is going to be... Oh, God, that's a bit bright. Let's turn the goggles on. So if we look down here, Io, Europa, they are engulfed by the sun. Is that Europa? Yeah, Europa's inside the sun as well. So they are immediately deleted from the simulation because they are not even... They can't even, they can't even be here. So they are gone. So Ganymede is now the closest planet to the sun, and I can say that because it's bigger than Mercury. So, yeah, it's not orbiting the planet, it's orbiting the star. This Ganymede is a full-on planet. Check it out. But it is in a very dangerous position, as you can see. Same deal with Callisto. Even the furthest moons of Jupiter are closer than probably what Mercury is to the sun normally. So that is a very dangerous position. So <laughs> this could incinerate all the moons of Jupiter, all the Jovian moons. So there we go. Saturn is now a lot closer to the sun than it was before. Could be interesting. The inner solar system itself, again... The sun is now further away. But Jupiter has now taken the presence of where the sun was. So we could see Jupiter pick up some new moons and see how that plays out. But one thing I need to do now is I need to quickly press play so it all works. But now I need to immediately... So obviously this is going to completely wreck everything. So I need to go to simulation just so we can actually get a working scenario. I need to go to auto-orbit. Where are we? Ah, I always forget where it is. It's tools, isn't it? Auto-orbit there. And that gives us this. So there we go. So now the sun is in the centre of the solar system. Saturn is closer than the former inner planets. So over a period of time that could start having problems. Jupiter has picked up Mercury as a moon by the looks of things. Okay. Mars is further out. Uranus and Neptune. Probably not much going to go on with those guys. They're further out. But we will see. And everything else here is also probably not much. So this is the main area we'll want to watch. So Saturn now having a lot closer presence to where Jupiter's original position. So Saturn now orbits at 4 AU, so closer than Jupiter's original orbit to the Sun, roughly-ish, something like that. So there you go. But Jupiter itself, or now the Sun, now taking over Jupiter. So Ganymede is probably what we're going to watch first. So I'm going to press play, and there you go. So <laughs> Ganymede is going to feel the heat. Here it is. It's going to melt that real quick. Let's press the speed up time a bit. There you go. Oh! Oh no! Roosh limit! The gravitational power! Ganymede! Torn to shreds by the sun! Too close to it! Callisto, how are we doing over here? Minus 116? I'm not sure that's quite right. There you go, warming up. So Ganymede immediately dissolved by the sun. Too strong, too close to it. Gravitational forces shredded it. Callisto, here we go, 100 plus degrees. This is in mere hours. There's water on its surface, but that water was there for seconds. It is gone. <laughs> so there you go, Callisto, immediately into the high temperatures. Ganymede is just a ring of, a ring of temperature now. Look at what was. There's nothing left. 
It's been completely incinerated. So the largest, uh, or the closest planet to the sun is gone already. Now forming a new ring of temperature around the sun. Very good. Callisto, the only other prominent object. Look at it now. Whoa, is that some greenhouse effect? What's going on here? Is it like Venus? What is it? Oh, carbon dioxide that was frozen on its surface. And sulfur dioxide. It's carbon and sulfur dioxide frozen on its surface. Completely ice. <laughs> Oh dear. Hotter than Venus ever was. Look at it. Oh my god. What chaos already. And this is just in the Jupiter moon system. Further out. If we look over here, everyone is going to get very cold now. Oh dear. Venus. Mercury. So they're all too far away now. Saturn now taking up the mantle. So I want to see what happens on Saturn. Because now Saturn is sharing a closer orbit to where Jupiter is. Some of Saturn's moons are also breaking away because the sun has stronger gravity here than in Saturn's normal orbit. So Saturn can't hold on to some of its moons anymore. So Saturn is also losing moons. That's why I particularly wanted Saturn's moons as well. Uranus and Neptune, again, they're still far away. I don't think they would have had much difference. But Saturn, these moons, man, it can't hold on to them anymore. So they are being broken away. So there you go. That's specifically why I wanted Saturn close to where Jupiter's original orbit was. We can see Jupiter is tearing up Earth's orbit here. There you go. Is it still Mercury still a moon of Jupiter? No, it is not. Mercury has also been slung off somewhere. So the inner planets, the former inner planets, are now being slung away. So now we need to wait for the two Titans to get close. We need Jupiter and Saturn to get close and see what carnage happens there. So <laughs> speed up time as quick as we can go. We need to wait for Saturn to come around and meet Jupiter. There you go. So there's nothing in that nothing in the uh, vicinity of the close area other than Jupiter moons there's nothing for quite a big distance other than the asteroid belt objects so there you go maybe I'll put the asteroid belt in the next scenario as well maybe we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll do two scenarios I'll, I'll add the Uranus Neptune moon systems in as well and see if that I, I doubt we're going to see much changes there but just for just so we know <laughs> so guys look how far away Earth's getting they're almost out to the Uranus region there so there you go, so Saturn, still waiting for it to catch up Jupiter here. Look at all the Saturn moons that are broken away, though. Look at all that. Saturn lost a lot of moons there. So you can see where I was. So there's Titan there. Hyperion. Iapetus is the last of the major moons. Past that, it's all just the asteroid stuff. So still holds on to the major moon, all the major moons, and then some of the asteroids out there. But, you know, it lost a lot of moons towards the sun. Something else just went there, I think. Look at the ring around Jupiter. Look at the temperature ring. Look at all the glowing objects in there. Oh, my God. There you go. Quite the collection. Is Callisto completely dissolved? I think it is. It's completely gone. It has. Oh dear. They're all lost in the glare of the sun anyway. <laughs> oh. So brutal death and destruction for the Jupiter moons, original ones. They are gone. So here we go. Saturn and Jupiter coming up. Maximum speed. Wait for Saturn to catch Jupiter up. Because Jupiter itself could capture some of Saturn's moon here and it could dislodge the orbit of Saturn. So we'll have to wait for it to come around. I can't run it any faster due to the amount of moons in this simulation. So that's the only issue. Is if I put the other moons in as well, it will slow the simulation down. Which is really annoying. But that's yeah, unfortunately the way it goes. Let's delete any particles. Speed up the sim a bit more. There you go. Here we go. Catching Jupiter up now. Very close orbital vicinities here. So if we just have a look at Jupiter. 10.9 10 years. Saturn is 9.6. They are very close proximity here. So let's say close by each other. Could see some problems. Here we go. Going to pass by. Jupiter may pick up some moons. Oh, oh, the orbits are swapping. Yeah, look at that. Saturn immediately affected by the original Jupiter, or the new Jupiter's position. Saturn has been slung out further. Oh, yeah. So immediately, the Saturn had a bad interaction. And Jupiter's now stealing some of the original Saturn moons. Look at that. Literally stolen them. Look at it go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pretty wild stuff. There you go. Jupiter. But there you go, that's the rough gist of it. So there you go, that is the scenario. So all the orbits get completely destroyed. <laughs> Jupiter pushes Saturn out somehow. All the inner planets just become just further out as well. Jupiter in the place of the original Sun, of course. And then Sun in the place of where Jupiter was once sitting. So there you go. Yeah, and then obviously all the Galilean moons were incinerated straight away by the power of the Sun there. So there we go. So let's go ahead and do another scenario now. So I'll go in the moons version. This has got all the moons preloaded. So here we go. And this one will be a simple replace one. So Jupiter and Saturn will not be... In, so here we go. So Jupiter and Saturn are in different positions this time. So it will, again, create a different scenario. So let's go ahead and press play. Make sure we're all running nice and slow. This simulation probably won't even run. But we'll give it a go. So there we go. So... Uh, 
um, on the sort of pause. Immediately go ahead and replace Jupiter with that, and then the Sun with Jupiter. So there you go. Do that. Press play and pause. Then simulation. Ah, oh, no, it's always tool. I always get those two mixed up. Tools. There you go. And then all tool bit. Here you go. So this is a new scenario. This time, the Sun is further away than. Saturn in the last one, so Saturn probably will hold on to its moons better here. So again, same scenario, Galileo moons, instantly destroyed. Ganymede, Callisto, they're not going to last either. Speed up time as quick as we can go. Ganymede, okay. oh yeah, gone. <laughs> oh, all the spray, there we go, Callisto is not going to last much longer. There you go. Saturn, though, on the other hand, is further out at this, this scenario, so I reckon the moons will last longer. If Saturn's moons all hold, then Uranus and Neptune, you know, their moons, I mean, they'll be fine. I mean, they're nowhere near the area still. So, there you go. Jupiter, though. Same scenario as before. Trying to steal some inner planets, the former inner planets, and so Mercury. But not entirely, uh, entirely going to work there, so there you go. Mercury also getting very cold. Earth, cold as well. Venus losing its temperature, slowly going to cool down. Ceres, Mars, all getting colder. Jupiter moons. Incineration. There you go. But that's the quickest we can run the sim. <laughs> but yeah, it looks like Saturn in its position. It's not going to lose its moons. Uh, this, I think that's fine. It's still too, it's still far enough away to hold on to the moons at that distance. I mean, where are we? So, 39 years. I mean, yeah, that's, that's not going to lose its moons. Uranus, Neptune. Their orbits have slightly changed around the sun, as you can see. But they're still... I mean, Neptune's still sitting at 30 AU... It's not a major difference for Neptune or Uranus, Saturn as well. So the moons of those guys are not affected. I think the moons of Saturn will only be affected if Jupiter is on the same side as the Sun as Saturn, if you replace it with the Sun. So, to conclude, whatever you do, don't do this at home, because otherwise you see the carnage. <laughs> but yeah, in all seriousness, conclusion, you replace Sun and Jupiter, swap them around. Jupiter's moons, they just become a, basically a belt of little asteroids orbiting the sun. The Galilean moons are completely obliterated, as you saw. So the sun just has a loads of uh, yeah, near-sun asteroids at this point, because that's all they are. They are just asteroids. So, massive belt of those. The asteroid belt stuff all just sits around the edges there. So it would be the same with all the other asteroid belt particles. But thank God we don't have those in here, because this simulation wouldn't run at all. Jupiter, it orbits the sun like business as usual, and it slowly clears out everything else in the orbital path. And then, if Saturn is close to where Jupiter became the Sun, those moons as well also get picked up by the Sun's uh, new position. And then they just become asteroids around the Sun. So, there you go. That does it for this video, everyone. So, what do you think of this what if? Let me know what you think down below in the comments as well. If you enjoyed this video, press that like button, subscribe. Helps on the journey to 50,000 subscribers as we continue closing in day by day. Really appreciate all your support, as always, everybody. And yeah, that all said and done. If you've got any ideas for more what if videos, let me know down below in the comments or in my Discord server in our video suggestions. And yeah, guys, make sure you all stay safe out there. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.